Kana is funny sometimes. Hi everyone, hope you all are doing great. Your boy Al is here with episode 2 review of Ashinoko season 2 so let's go. At first we see that in a flashback set on Tokyo Blade's preliminary meeting day, Aqua and Kana arrive at the stage play's filming building. Before they get on set, they chat with Melt, who is happy to work with them again. Melt suspects Kana and Aqua aren't thrilled about performing with him again, but he promises he has practiced a lot since his Sweet Today performance. The trio then arrives on set where Raida introduces himself, Kendaichi, and the other performers. Akane approaches Aqua and tells him she admires theater and offers her help if he needs it. Meanwhile, Melt and Kana discuss Aqua and Akane's relationship and their roles in Tokyo Blade. It looks like Melt got a really good wake-up call during their last show, and now he is trying to improve himself, which shows character progression, and I'm all for some good character growth. Also poor Kana really doesn't like Aqua and Akane's relationship. We see Melt and Kana discuss Sweet today, with Melt wishing Kana had critiqued him more during filming so he could have realized he was a bad actor sooner. Despite this, Melt vows to redeem himself with his Tokyo Blade performance. Then, we cut to Abiko and Yuriko at a bar. Abiko is revealed to be a popular manga artist and author. She asks Yuriko for advice, knowing Yuriko's story was adapted into an anime and TV drama. Abiko also wants Yuriko to attend Tokyo Blade stage play rehearsal with her, and Yuriko agrees. Before leaving the bar, Abiko brushes her teeth in the restroom, while Yuriko reflects on how manga authors often have issues with adaptations of their work, leading to production problems. She understands that a give and take compromise is necessary in these situations. I agree that both sides need to compromise certain things if they want to make a good adaptation, but sadly most of the time authors get the short end of the stick, and their stories get changed to the point that they become totally different. Next we see that Yuriko knows this is something Abiko may not consider. Eventually, we return to the present timeline. Abiko tells Raida she wants them to fix Tokyo Blade's entire script. She reminds Raida that she asked for revisions countless times. However, someone from Raida's team had told her that once she saw the actors perform, she would understand why the script was great. Goa apologizes and asks Abiko how he should revise the script. Abiko responds that although Goa was informed of the changes she wanted, he failed to make them. She continues to argue with Goa, listing points that make it seem like he has never read Tokyo Blade. Yuriko pulls Abiko aside before the argument escalates. Meanwhile, Yuriko contemplates the problems authors have with adaptations, the nature of these negotiations, and the behind-the-scenes issues between Abiko, Raida, and his staff. I can't blame Abiko for what she did here, because others were forcing their decisions onto her until now, even though she was seemingly against them, so now they can only blame themselves. Moving on we see Yuriko discussing why Abiko can be difficult to work with and understand. Then, Yuriko's game of telephone concept plays out between Abiko and Raida's respective teams. Although Abiko doesn't like Goa's script, Abiko's editor tells her that Raida's team believes she'll appreciate the script when she sees the actors perform it in real time. Abiko agrees to judge the script based on these performances. Abiko then tells Raida that she wants Goa off the project and wants to write the entire script herself. She threatens to revoke her permission for the play if Raida refuses, acknowledging the drawbacks of this decision and expressing her willingness to pay the price. Abiko's editor is concerned because this would mean their company would have to cover the costs, but Abiko doesn't care. She says she doesn't seek payment for her revisions and is fine with Goa being credited and paid. Nonetheless, Abiko demands Raida remove Goa from the project. Aqua then asks Goa how he feels about the situation. This part shows that a script writer's job is very hard, because they need to please the director and the author at the same time, and if they fail then they need to face the heat, just like Goa. Then we see Goa argue that there's not much he can do since his position isn't as significant as they think. He discusses the issue later with Raida, stating he doesn't mind Abiko's requests but asks Raida to remove his name from the credits. 
Goa doesn't want to take credit for Abiko's revisions. Raida is unsure if he can make that happen for several reasons, arguing that Goa's script was good and that he didn't do anything wrong. Nonetheless, Raida asks Goa to accept their circumstances, and Goa complies. Goa returns home and reflects on the effort and time he put into making the script superb. Then, Kindaichi informs Aqua and his co-workers that rehearsals will be put on hold until the revised script is complete. Goa wanting to back down is pretty relatable, because taking credit without doing anything is very disgraceful, especially if you love your job. Also most producers in real life aren't as nice as Raida. At the end we see Akane and a co-worker discuss the situation, Aqua eavesdrops on their conversation and asks them to explain what a stage around play is. Akane and her co-workers are surprised, and Aqua tells them he's not a fan of it. Aqua elaborates on why he feels this way about theater. Akane then asks Aqua to attend a stage around play with her. I always thought Aqua always does his research before doing something, but it looks like he doesn't know much about stage plays, which shows a new side of him. Also I'm very curious to see how Ashinoko will handle the famous trope of the dating episode. Nonetheless, this was a great episode that showcased how authors and scriptwriters feel about their work. Anyways thanks for watching everyone. If you like my video then check out some of my other videos. Also don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel or leave a comment if you want to say something, you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram or check out my Facebook page, links are given in the description until then see ya.